But let's get going. There was a team of eight of us who went to e-learning Africa and Mauritius, which was from 27th to 29th September of this year. Um, and it's good to be able to at least have a small group of colleagues, including many who are in the team, as we report back. And then the recording will be usable to other people as well. Um, I know that Jakob got the slide together about um, Mauritius as an island a bit away from Madagascar in the Indian Ocean, um, that people know about Mauritius in terms of the extinction of the dodo, um, and of course through its amazing beach resorts. The other thing that Mauritius has a big reputation for is, of course, sugarcane. Um, and there's some interesting things about the history of Mauritius and the way in which it's simultaneously um, very francophone and has a massive Indian diaspora population. Jakob, anything you want to add at this point? Uh, no, Tony, um, not, uh, not, not, not to, this, uh, to this particular slide. No? Okay. Um, we looked at the cost of hotel accommodation and found it was absolutely exorbitant, as it often is um, in official conference hotels. So we did a few searches, looked around, and found ourselves um, a nice, Airbnb option with two pretty much um, well-equipped houses right next to each other, a short drive away from the conference venue. And so these are a couple of scenes from us in the Emerge house, checking in with each other, preparing for different things. Um, it was a good place to um, make connections as a team and collaborate, um, scheming about what we do the next day, reflecting on what had happened, and planning for the next adventure at the conference. Um, yeah, and maybe, um, well, Vinya has uh, some reflection of that. Apparently, this was um, Alice and Wavinia on the beach at the conference venue, not just relaxing and chilling out, but also scheming and planning for what Alice would be doing at the closing plenary debate. Okay, a few of us um, with our with the eLearning Africa banner before the conference started. Um, Jakob, do you want to say something about eLearning Africa? Yes, Tony. Um, as you see on this slide, uh, about 765 delegates from about 65 countries uh, took part in the, in this year's uh, eLearning Africa, which um, is significantly fewer than, than the usual uh, in the past uh, many years, uh, participants have been about a thousand, one thousand two hundred for, for for the biggest. Um, Eden Africa is, is a key networking um, venue uh, and has become that over the past uh, past twelve years um, that that the conference has been on for for um, for e learning practitioners um, and professionals from. Not many from Africa, uh, but we also saw quite a few from Europe and uh, North uh, North America as well. Um, so this uh, eLearning Africa this year took place from the 27th of September to the 29th. Um, not sure if it was, if Tony mentioned it already, but we arrived uh, on the Monday, so we had a couple of days uh, days before just to, to prepare. And then we left on the Saturday, um, so we could relax a little bit um, before before heading home. Oh, I see that we have a bit of conversion um, issues here. Um, but let me just briefly, for those of you who don't know us, uh, introduce the team. 
I'm going from top left, uh, Tony Carr is our program convener um, and uh, founder of, uh, of the Merge Africa. Then we have our East Africa coordinator, Dr. Alice Sambutla. And the missing picture that we have next to Alice should have been, or is there, that's uh, Jerome Duga. Jerome is our West African um, regional coordinator. Um, Nicola in the bottom left is uh, our co-convener for the network and then um, Harim um, who is doing a lot for us um, including the facilitating online course that we are also running and Mohammed who is uh, our sort of Arabic uh, connection in Egypt and um, then myself Jakob who is uh, the project manager for the network and um, what we're looking at is the entire team that had this opportunity to, to go to the conference this year um, on like last year where we had a slightly reduced uh, team. And uh, perhaps uh, Nicola, do you want to go next on the slides? Yes, fair to mention that we're missing a picture from our um, Gabriel Konayuma from the uh, from Zambia. It's with the uh, Zambian Ministry of, um, of Education as well, also with us, a part of the team. So Nicola, your sound is gone. Tony, we want to say a bit about this slide. or perhaps I can do that as well. Um, I can mention that the um, the main theme for the conference this year was um, the importance of context, learning in, in context, um, where all the presentations sort of aimed at looking at not just what we what what we're doing, but also how they fit into to more like the uh, sort of uh, African uh, context and and how they um, are created with, uh, with that specific context in mind. Okay. Thanks. Um, but there was an interesting phenomenon that we have observed which was that um, it seemed like with the reduced number of delegates that the role of um, UNESCO delegates and delegates from some of the European countries was much stronger proportionately mm -hmm. than to normal e-learning Africa. Um, and that made for a, a different um, balance to the conversation. OK, let's move on. Um, before we went off to the conference, we set a couple of goals for our team. We were going to contribute a pre-conference workshop. A number of us were presenting in our own right. Alice, and this came out later, um, very close to the time we were going, Alice got invited to um, take part in the closing plenary debate. We were, of course, going to meet with new and existing colleagues. Lots of networking is always on the agenda at eLearning Africa. Um, and a focus on identifying potential collaborators and presenters. And at a conference where there are a lot of people saying things we never heard before, it's time to learn, um, which is always um, really important to get a sense of the emerging developments across the continent. Um, Nicola, are you in the house, uh, able to talk? If you have sound, maybe um, you want to say something about the workshop? Um, yes, Tony, is my, is my sound all right? It's fine. Keep going. OK, so this is about our, our workshop. So we went uh, 
to deliver a half-day um, pre-conference workshop on learning design and was informed by the online event we had um, before that where we asked our members to complete a survey about learning design at their institutions. So we went in there, I think, with a pretty good idea of um, what's, what's going on, um, how are people thinking about things. And we used that to start a discussion about mapping our context and our challenges. Uh, we spoke a bit about learning design models used in African universities and some key learning design uh, principles. Um, but overall, I think I think our, our group found it really interesting. If we could get the next slide, please, Jakob, because I can't change slides on my phone. Um, I'm talking using my mobile. Uh, yeah, so that was like the title of our workshop. Uh, we took members of the team uh, took turns co-presenting different uh, parts of the workshop. As you know, being a merge team, we collaborated on our um, workshop and our slides and everything. We were very lucky that we had such a lovely venue and it was also fully booked. So apparently this part of the hotel is usually used for weddings. Um, yeah, it was very fancy. There was even a sort of stage in the front with like, like a table that's meant for a, a panel. So so yeah, but of course, knowing us, we like to be with our um, with our colleagues and walking around and sitting at tables with our with our workshop participants. So we did that most of the time. We had forty seven registered uh, participants, and almost all took part, including some some pop ins. So here you can see uh, we had a really nice group of colleagues. Yes, Douglas was there as well. He presented actually on uh, digital literacies. And that for me is something that's so exciting because he did the postgrad diploma in educational technology. Um, it was nice when your students become colleagues and present at conferences here. I, I absolutely love that. So yes, the previous picture was of myself, Sandeya Ganes, and Jerome Duga who facilitated that online learning design uh, event. Okay, I'm trying to see which, if my, yes, I noticed my phone and my laptop, <laughs> the slides are not in sync. So I'm following the visuals on the laptop <laughs> and speaking to, to the phone. It's quite an interesting okay. experience. So we have a couple of reflections coming up here from Alice who talked about how it was well attended and there was good teamwork. But we had a sense that some of the participants were very new to e-learning uh, and were just just starting to engage with the, even the notion of learning design and that maybe we should have had a one-day workshop instead, although obviously with the schedule that didn't work out. Um, and then, don't move the slides on yet. Um, dear, dear colleagues, and then Gable's reflection about the lively and self-motivated participants. OK, so we're back to that graphic now with um, Jerome, Sandea, and Nicola. And on to the next slide, our day one plenary reflections. Um, across that plenary, the best keynote came from um, the Honorable Leela Devi Dukon Luchuman the Minister of Education and Human Resources, Tertiary Education and Scientific Research. That's one huge set of portfolios to have. Um, and she presented a really well-considered um, understanding of e-learning, um, which got into the, the real challenges um, and the practicalities of trying to introduce e-learning and going beyond dreams um, to developing a strategy that will actually make it work, and why it matters for the whole of Africa and why it matters for Mauritius. The Minister of Technology, Communication, Innovation stressed the importance of ICT in Mauritius, um, which for a small country is 4.5% of GDP. This is actually quite big in relation to the size of the country. 
and Dr. Asfour from ASSRT in Egypt appealed for investment in women and youth and promotion of entrepreneurship as well. Um, we can move on to the day two reflections. Maybe uh, Nicola or Jakob, you want to talk about this? Yes, I can talk about this. So I went to a lovely presentation by Avinash Ojura from Mauritius Institute of Education and he was just so inspiring. Um, what I liked about it is that, okay, just for some context, they work with teachers and they design educational um, materials. But he asked, how can Africans be makers rather than takers of technology? I felt he, if we can just go to the next slide quickly, um, here were some very profound questions um, that he asked, encouraged the audience to engage with. And it was about, you know, whose technology, the question of whose technology, why, um, and often he says, take us, purchase softwares, and the ways to use these things, and they pay experts to come to Africa um, who then have their own ways of designing and developing resources and pedagogies, um, which is not very sort of culturally sensitive. So I encouraged the audience to be more sensitive about these things. Um, he also spoke about how their team uh, works together and they, how they had to become a learning organization, Can't, not just relying on traditional learning patterns like attending conferences and workshops, he spoke about new ways of working where there's new, no hierarchies, uh, the need to be flexible, um, and he spoke about this in relation to 21st century organizations where we need these new ways of learning to move from content to conversation, consumption to creation, and about the value of mistakes. Um, okay, and then the other one I attended was from Opportunity Education, it was Martel Russ, Martin Russell and Daniel Numbo. Uh, while I thought it was about learning design, it was more about pedagogic perspectives and strategies that drive design or materials and training. Um, I thought they had a nice, like a different approach to implementation and capacity building. Uh, where they said, well, it's not just about pumping devices. It's about teachers as creators. It's about pedagogy more than technology. Uh, of course, we all really agree with that. Uh, there was a lot of emphasis on the social, um, experiential, and inquiry learning. Um, he did talk. A, they did talk a bit about design principles, informing materials and training, as I mentioned. Um, I liked how they also showed a picture of active learning strategies, you know, happening in a classroom in Tanzania. Um, and they spoke about how different ways people are taking localization into account. One of these was overlaying existing YouTube videos with local voices. Um, thought that was quite an interesting strategy. Uh, they also spoke about the social distance between learners and teachers and how in the work that they're doing, the word mentor in Tanzania has inspired quite a mind shift, mindset shift uh, in the classroom and ways of interacting with students. Uh, the word facilitator they found didn't work for them. Um, so it was interesting to hear about how relationships, you know, words inspire particular roles uh, that allow shifts to happen. Then I participated in the panel on academic best practices. It was a bit awkward because I felt audience wasn't really able to engage. You were sort of sitting on the stage. Oh, the sound breaking up a bit. Sorry. I can hear myself fine on the laptops. I can hear via the headphones. It seems to be clear. Maybe it's just yours. Yeah, Jakob says it's fine on his side. Um, yeah, so back to the panel. Um, yeah, there was not a very good overlap between presentations. And I think I would I would just have liked to engage with the audience a bit more. 
Um, I met John Kwame Bauteng from University of Ghana. He presented about technology-mediated um, faculty-student interactions. And he presented survey findings about um, whether students use and like their LMS versus Facebook, um, but didn't, I think, get into too much depth on particular issues. But it was about instructor presence and how in students interact with lectures online, uh, which I think is a much needed research area uh, in African higher education context. Um, and together, these three really highlighted the importance of relationships at different levels. Um, I think that's all from me for now. Oh, that was just Abhinash's slide that I said was really useful. Um, and he speaks about how often in African uh, institutions, uh, when we're using educational technology, we move from mimicry, we mimic what's happening in the global north. Um, and then we sort of modify things a bit, we trouble that hegemony, and then things become more hybrid, and we enter sort of third space where there's negotiation of meanings. Okay, Jakob, I think I can, or, or Tony, can I hand over to you for day two? I can uh, take that one if you don't mind, Tony. Uh, on day two, on the, on the Thursday, um, Tony and I presented a, a workshop um, we call the work called Social Network Analysis with Visual Representation of an Online Professional Development Network. Long title. Um, basically, what Tony and I were presented was uh, gathered uh, social, uh, social uh, network data primarily from the Emerge Africa Facebook group um, uh, as a way to sort of reflect on that and reflect on how we can use it to um, to learn things about uh, how our network is evolving. Um, the organizers chose to set us up as a, as a networking meetup. Um, I must admit I was a bit in doubt about the formats, um, but it turns out to work uh, quite well, I think. We had, uh, I think, um, I was I was surprised about the, uh, the how many took part. We had 21 delegates, uh, mainly from Mauritius, South Africa, France, and the UK. Uh, I may have forgotten uh, one or two countries, but those were uh, from the main uh, nations. Um, it was set up on an on-site, uh, very nice, uh, very fancy Indian restaurant. It was a part of this uh, resort that we that the conference took part to, to place in. Um, we had a bit of few challenges, Tony and I, when we showed up. Um, no projector, no screen, um, no Wi-Fi, uh, and with all our slides on Google Slides and uh, not even downloaded. Um, but we managed anyway, so like you see in the picture, um, put up a laptop, um, ask people to stand around and uh, look at PowerPoint slides. And actually, I think uh, it was a very nice session. Um, we had a lot of dialogue um, and conversation. Um, us as presenter, I feel, and also the uh, the delegates. Uh, now, now that we're sort of like forced to stand up uh, am among themselves, so we some of the things that we discussed was um, the way that we chose um, for our network to collect data. Uh, some were very critical um, and questioned um, quite critically um, the things that we had collected, uh, if, if that were uh, valuable. Uh, we also spoke a bit about the data analysis methods, uh, how do we look at the data that we now collected and um, what characterizes uh, this kind of data is typically that it's um, it's a massive amount, um, and it's a, it's a complex uh, complex uh, analysis. Many also address the questions of um, consent and uh, ethics in collecting data. Um, this is a quite a, a new thing for us. Um, so you see the change slides have changed now. That's that's fine. It's quite a new thing, but but overall, I think it was a, it was a nice session. 
somewhat quite critical, but I think we had a good, uh, very good feedback that's quite useful for us to think about how we can use uh, social network data uh, as a way to evaluate and to basically understand uh, our network uh, a bit better. And uh, Nicola, would you like to speak about uh, at least the first two of those items on the day three reflections? Um, yes, yeah, sure, I can speak about that. Um, so I attended the panel, which was international, international MOOCs in Context. Um, Taskeen Adam was the only panelist from Africa. Others were all international, but working with folks in based in Africa. Um, yeah, they asked how successful have MOOCs been in Africa? Can they properly take account of local context? Um, they had case studies geared towards health and sanitation sectors. Uh, those presenters were from Germany, I think, and Switzerland, um, I think. They did provide an overview of kind of the performance of the African MOOC to some extent, as promised in the abstract. Um, but I felt it was lacking. They were generalizing and essentializing to quite a large extent. Um, there was no mention of UCT MOOCs, which have made uh, the global top 10 list of best MOOCs globally for three years in a row. It's like, how do you not pick that up? Um, maybe I'm biased because it's my colleagues that are involved in creating those fabulous MOOCs. Um, yeah, and I, I do think, yes, there is neo sort of imperialism, like a, like a thrust there. Um, but I think it's an area where we need a bit more critical engagement. Then Jess Arbach from um, African Leadership Institute. It's like a university uh, in, in Mauritius, a very alternative. They believe in, um, I think it was interests rather than majors. Uh, they're quite, quite fascinating curriculum work that they're doing. Um, but she presented on decolonizing social science pedagogy. And she also shared some of the activities that have worked in the classroom to engage students in uh, tensions around global sort of issues. Um, she, for example, she spoke about how they use WhatsApp and combine traditional and non-traditional academic texts, such as you know radio interviews. Um, so that was really interesting to hear her approach uh, as an educator. Um, it was very interesting to see this topic at a conference like this, which obviously came with comes with its own um, power issues because uh, the organizers are not from from Africa, um, and there's a very large sort of European sort of constituency. But anyway, um, she also shared frameworks that can be used and writers. Um, that they engage with as educators, but also with students, such as Frere, uh, Ngugi Watiungo, Francis Nemanjo, you know, Spivak Fanon, which I'm sure a lot of the, our colleagues in South Africa who are very involved in decolonizing education movement um, also engage with and have heard about. Uh, I felt that while this is a big issue in South Africa and elsewhere, um, so globally, and I could see Mauritian colleagues were interested in this as well. There were actually few attendees from other African countries that were interested in uh, this conversation. Um, so it's not, I sense that it's not an African-wide interest, and perhaps there are various reasons for this. Um, maybe people are in different stages of uh, decolonization. Um, yeah, back to you, Jakob. Thank you, Nicola. I went to the uh, to the session that was. Um, it seemed a bit like uh, they were organized, maybe a bit unsure to uh, to put one name on. So it was just called academic best practice practice cases. Um, there were, of course, various speakers. Um, Matlin Moodling, here from South Africa. Um, 
working with the Human Sciences uh, Research Council, um, looking into implementing um, ICTs in schools. Um, of course, that's not a, a sort of a, a new topic. Um, I think one of the the emphasis that are that are that I took from that is his uh, sort of call to reopen the digital divides uh, and not think that that was a debate um, that goes a few years back where there was an active discussion about how um, you had the have-nots and the haves who had the digital technologies and those who had don't but um, reopen that discussion and uh, and also look at how skills are provided in, in using these devices as a way of uh, integrating effectively. He uh, also focused on the need to uh, translate into indigenous languages um, and uh, also how um, use of technologies can be scaffolded uh, in local languages uh, with uh, videos and, and other media as well. Um, and then we had some, if you are regularly with the Emerge Africa, you may have come across anti -nopes. We sort of more or less form informally um, work a bit with Andy. Andy is with the INASP and the author AIDS. So Andy spoke at this conference about uh, his work um, of uh, using MOOCs um, and as a way to to pair mentors and mentees uh, in order to uh, to promote uh, um, sort of um, research in especially developing countries and especially assistance to uh, emerging researchers um, it was uh, it was quite interesting we have had uh, Andy before in a previous session um, so many of the things that he mentioned was were also mentioned in earlier sessions that were hosted um, for Emerge uh, Africa as well. Mary Morimi, I am not sure. I think Mary is originally from Uganda, um, but currently with the uh, Texas Tech, Tech uh, University in the States. Uh, quite strong perspectives on uh, learning design and an emphasis on. Um, taking uh, a starting point uh, with the students, uh, students in mind, um, rather than taking a, a top-down view. Um, I think um, from my perspective um, and the recent focus that we had in Emerge Africa on learning design, I was, I was a bit um, surprised, uh, not surprised, but uh, certainly noticed that um, she did not, at any stage in the presentation, in mention any sort of uh, models like uh, Eddy or Sam or any kinds of uh, models that you would usually be introduced to when you um, when you are looking at learning design. She sort of started uh, with her own methods, um, and uh, I, th I think it's a bit too too long to. Uh, to tell exactly what she said, but it's it's a uh, it's an interesting perspective. Um, she sort of started very much on the on the ground uh, with the students, uh, uh, literally around her. So that was uh, that was quite interesting. Um, the last session on on that um, on that panel was uh, Martin Butler. Martin is from um, University of Stellenbosch. Um, he spoke about uh, how he used uh, Adobe Connect. Um, which is a platform that we are very familiar with here. Um, as, a, as a local classroom teaching um, both uh, at the University of Stellenbosch and also um, students uh, in other countries. He spoke particularly about the importance of having a back channel, which basically means uh, you're running your session online uh, and within that session um, you are running at a channel where you speak up about your teaching and learning uh, and then issues about how the students are if they have any problems during the session um, then they can air that on the on the back channel as well and if 
he found that uh, quite uh, as a quite effective and uh, important thing to have uh, during during a session. Um, so that was also uh, that was also quite interesting. Um, however, I so kind of left with a bit of the sense of, uh, but well, we have two South Africans, um, and we have um, one based in the States and uh, one from the UK. Uh, it sort of gave less, sort of like the usual places. Um, I would be interested to hear more from um, elsewhere in 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 Africa um, perspectives on how to academically um, to have a good practice academically in using um, digital technologies. That was very long. Um, Nicola, you want to take the next, or perhaps Tony? I'm here. Um, yeah, this was another of those. Um, very special events that happened in the Veda restaurant um, where there was an attempt to have a theme which was really about new technologies and hackathons. The discovery demo session was quite an interesting one, um, bringing together people who were developing new tools and um, spins on existing technologies. Um, what I found especially interesting was the presentation by John and Dury of the Humanitarian Leadership Academy of a tool for fast, simple creation of mobile content. Um, they have a network of people who need to be responding to emergencies and need to very quickly learn about um, principles and approaches to deal with different kinds of emergencies. I also really liked the presentation by Hossam El Magar, who is originally an Egyptian journalist um, working with the Thompson Foundation in the UK on professional development for journalists across many countries and continents, um, which includes the development of a professional community online. Um, and those, I think, were the, were the most interesting ones there. In the afternoon, we have the hackathon, or Hackfest methodology, um, which is um, a German educator um, working on how you use hackathons to um, approach complex problems. Um, my sense is that there wasn't a very strong methodological basis that would explain why a hackathon was better than certain other approaches, but was still an interesting conversation to be part of. Okay, so this is John and Dury in the Discovery Demo session. Yeah, um, and of course what used to happen is that there were lots and lots of good face-to-face -face networking opportunities. Um, anyone here want to pick that up? Perhaps um, Nicola as our as our, as our main networker. <laughs> no, I think I think Irene and Mohammed took the cake this time. <laughs> um, yes, so we had an interesting we had a little competition, and folks could grab a member of the eLearning um, Africa t Emerge Africa team and win a prize, which was a lovely little shwe bag with uh, USB flash drives with recordings of our webinars, all our learning design webinars on it. Um, I, yeah, here's a picture of Mohammed networking, um, Haskeen and Jerome, and then I met Penina Lam, who's presented to us before on e-mentoring. E I met her face to face. I also met two Mauritian uh, ladies who took the facilitating online course uh, last year. So that was, that was a really nice surprise for me. Um, yeah, I think that's all I can say for now, Jakob. Ah, this is the big one. Who wants to take this one? Okay, I'll Tony? Um, yeah, what we had was a wonderful opportunity when Alice got invited to be part of the panel 
um, in the closing plenary debate. And this is the topic. This House believes that grandiose Silicon Valley education initiatives have really taken account of local context and are not what Africa needs. Um, Alice was recruited to be part of the people opposing the motion. And you know, if you've been at eLearning Africa, their closing plenary debates always set up false dichotomies, where they make a statement where um, it creates the impression you're either on one side of it or another. But actually, once you start opening it up, it um, reveals certain complexities and nuances which allow you to engage with it in more subtle ways, which is very fortunately what the people on both sides of this debate eventually did. OK. Um, and with Alice on the opposing side, we had Stephen Foslu, um, who people know from the past, from past Ealing Africa's and from his work with Shuttleworth a long time ago. And since then, he's worked with Pearson and now works with UNESCO. Um, the debate opened up a lot of conversation, a lot of really passionate um, and critical contributions from the audience. Um, and my sense is that our colleague Alice um, argued really well and took a lot of effort to prepare because it takes a lot of preparation when you're going up against um, a panel full of um, experts with decades of experience in different contexts. Um, it's not a role that I'd necessarily want to play. Um, and I'm very glad to say that Alice performed magnificently in that role. Um, and of course, we had a supporting contribution from Jerome, who spoke from the floor as well. Um, I don't know, perhaps um, Wavinia or Alice, if you're around, if you want to say something in the text chat as well. And maybe Wavinia will bring you in with voice as well soon. Yeah, so now we have onto the conference impressions. Um, do you want to start with that, Jakob? Yes, uh, let me just do that. Um, my impression overall of the conference um, was that, um, I mean, this was quite, uh, was a lot smaller than our been to uh, to um, Elon Africa uh, previously. Um, and you got the feel that it was um, that it was smaller, also in the sense of uh, of, of the presentations available, um, like uh, Tony mentioned in the beginning. Um, you had the feel that it was a bit skewed away from from af actually African uh, participation. Um, I was uh, myself in some of the sessions that were run by UNESCO, um, and the kind of uh, when you sit there, kind of like feel a bit, a uh, bit out of the place uh, that you are at uh, some other kind of conference. It was nice though, uh, on open educational uh, resources. Uh, I should have wished there were a bit more um, relating to the higher, uh, higher education uh, sector. Um, but hopefully, uh, we'll see a bigger conference next year. Um, and certainly, it was a good opportunity still for myself and the team to, to be there uh, this year. OK, thanks, Jakob. And certainly from Alice's perspective, she commented on the lower attendance than previous e-learning Africas, the new faces, and the more prominent role of conversation about e-learning for achieving SDGs. Um, Irene Wavinia, whose sound isn't good, so. She, so we otherwise have her voice in here right now, talked about the new faces and suggested the venue was too posh for the purpose of the conference. Yeah, I mean, the venue was not ideal, and it was actually a fallback venue um, after eLearning Africa hadn't been able to secure 
a much bigger and possibly more versatile conference venue elsewhere in Mauritius. So that's understandable. Nicola, uh, Nicola, your perspective? Yeah, I was. I mean, just it was a great opportunity to meet Mauritian colleagues, and I think South Africa and Mauritius are in very similar kinds of, you know, have have similar interests, uh, e-learning wise. Uh, also, the, as I mentioned, the decolonized curricula interest, and both are sort of a bit beyond that um, the hype and early aspirational phase of e-learning, you know, uptake that a lot of colleagues and other African institutions are at. Uh, so I think we've got a lot to collaborate on. Yeah, that's my impression. Over to. Okay, here we Tony. are. Yep. Um, Jacob has talked about his perspectives. Um, is I assume that Mohammed is in the room. Is that correct? Yep. Mohammed. Hello. Hi, Mohammed. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Very well. Okay. Keep talking. I think. Uh, yeah. That's great. Okay. Thank you. E-learning Africa uh, this year, 2017, was very smaller, uh, but this very a good chance for us to have a good face-to-face -face communication, to speaking about our network, and explain what we are doing. And I think we have a lot of meeting with people. They are coming to Emerge Africa and asking about us. And the second point, I think the debating was fantastic. Because we are uh, have Alice in this ex excellent contribution, uh, and I would like to have more technologies in uh, the next conference of uh, e-learning Africa in Kagal, Rwanda. See you. Okay. Thank you, thank you Mohammed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and my reflection essentially is that the organizers were operating under quite difficult circumstances um, and did a good job and that meant that there were some really good elements in the program um, networking um, as ever being quite superb um, and while it was very well worth being there I'm looking forward to eLearning Africa 2018 Kigali where they now have a whole year to prepare and to get the best and most appropriate venues um, and also ensure that there is um, a much bigger attendance and a really amazing lineup of keynotes and presenters. So I think that um, eLearning Africa is going to be back to its usual magnificence next year in Kigali. And yes, as Kath said, it's time to plan now for a great conference. Um, I mean, I know, Wavinia, that your sound is not brilliant, but would you like to try bringing your voice into the conversation? Um, tell us later if you like. Yeah, so this is it. Kigali, a little bit of a view of Kigali from the Wikipedia photograph. Um, really interesting city. Um, and with some good tech capacity, as well for people who are visiting as a fair amount of accommodation within a relatively short journey of conference venues. Yeah, it will be much cheaper to access from Kenya than Mauritius was. And we must thank the eLearning Africa team. Um, it became clear to us that um, they were facing particular challenges as organizers, which were beyond their control, and coping really well. We found members of the team really helpful, really supportive of our efforts as eMERGE Africa. And especially we'll thank um, Rebecca Strohmeyer, Rosa Calero, Ver Veronique Mais, and Lydia Fever. Yep, um, Nicola, you want to pick up this one?
Yes, sure. Um, I just wanted to r remind folks that we have this fascinating seminar series on the go with the AECT Division of Cultural Learning and Technology. Uh, we've had two webinars already. Um, they've been really interesting, especially this, you know, and, and we've decided to add a third one, which will take place on the 31st of October. Uh, same time, 1 p.m. South African time, and same Adobe Connect room. Uh, you can look it up on Facebook as well. There's an, an event um, page where the links to the recordings are also posted, uh, or you can find them on the YouTube channel. Um, Tony. Yup, um, we used to have a legendary series of Emerge online conferences, 2004, 2006, 2008, 2012. We broke from that to have a research colloquium transform um, in 2015. And now we're going to have another Emerge 2018, which will be a festival of e-learning, which will have multiple components. There will be a research colloquium element. There will be a workshop week, online workshops. And there will also be a unconference component and layer to the festival. Uh, we're working on the call and we'll put that out for a bit of feedback within the Emerge African networks before we go completely public with the call. Um, and we're open to ideas about how to make this a really useful, really exciting, and really energizing process. And this will be from the 9th to the 20th of July. Don't expect everyone to be involved all the time. Um, it's one of those processes where you come into the things that are useful to you when you're available. Okay. And yeah, um, we went to the Happy Raja, which is a really nice Indian restaurant, um, after the last day of conference to check in with each other, do a bit of reflection and chill out a bit. And this is a photograph that one of the people there took of our team. And then um, we had great fun. Um, when we got to um, the airport in Mauritius and found that flights were being delayed wholesale. Um, and here we have Nicola and Alice somehow managing a smile while sitting on the floor in the chaos of the airport. Hmm, yeah. I thought this is a good pick of them too. And really, it is a case of thank you to everyone for being here, for taking part. Um, we'd be open to a couple of questions. Um, I know it's, it's, it's late in terms of the hour, but we're certainly open to a few questions if you have any questions at this point. And further inputs. I'm not sure what number 36 is. Let's see. Ah, that was a filler slide. Anyway. Um, Nicola or Jakob, do you want to wrap up? From my side, um, just a big thank you as well. Um, I think uh, you feel a bit like you're at, you're at home at eLearning Africa. Uh, and I think um, one of the reasons, um, a very significant reason, is uh, the way <coughs> the way the e-learning Africa um, organizers uh, they are always there always there for us so so that's wonderful and also a big thank, thank you to my colleagues um, I think we had a great time I think we had a good um, we worked very well as a team and I'm looking forward to uh, next year in the Kigali Indeed, me as well, looking forward to it. Um, I mean, it's something that I think it, it's always difficult. There are always people that cancel last minute or didn't get visas in time. I mean, there are a lot of things that we often, you know, take for granted, like, um, 
you know, conference funding, um, travel arrangements, and often people are waiting for their funding before they can book their flight tickets. And you know, of, and I think the eLearning Africa team uh, did everything that's in their power to close those sort of gaps in the program where people had cancelled. Um, so it's good that I think we all know quite far in advance when next year is going to be and where it's going to be so we can plan. Um, yeah, I hope to see more folks there uh, next year and yeah, it's going to be interesting.